All right, this is the only slide you're gonna see from me today. And that's because for this talk, I'd like us to try to use our imaginations together a little. Now, I'm a planetary scientist studying stars and planets in faraway solar systems, and we're quickly finding that these different solar systems, they're very different from our own. Let's take the particular case of planetary orbits. Now, in our solar system, the orbits are pretty quiet and regular, and the reason for this is distance. Our nearest neighbors, Venus and Mars, are so far away from us that their orbits can't possibly interfere with ours. But today, I'd like to talk to you about a star system, Kepler-32, where that's most definitely not the case. So, if my arm span is the distance between our sun and its closest planet, Mercury, this is the distance between Kepler-32 and its closest star, planet. In fact, Kepler-32 has five planets jammed into this distance. So that's a lot of mass moving very fast, very close to a lot of other mass, and it creates an unbelievably tangled gravitational experience. Um, let, let's try to visualize that together. Imagine if Mars came so close to Earth that we could watch it rise and set in our sky eight times a day. That mass would be a constant forcing function on the orbit of our moon, trying to kick it out of Earth orbit or even out of the star system. Think of Mars in that case as the mean bully that's trying to kick you out of the playground. Except, in the case of Kepler-32, what we actually have are five bullies that are constantly fighting amongst each other for dominance. To make things worse, the planets have resonances between them. You can think of those as uh, temporary alliances between the bullies, two or three working at the same time to kick the others out. These alliances are fickle, they change on the order of hours. So we, at any given time, some planet might be trying to force another planet out of the system, creating gravitational chaos. What I'm trying to model using, by simulating the gravity of Kepler-32, I'm trying to figure out if a moon could somehow survive, and if so, under what circumstances could a planet in this cramped system host a moon? The reason this is important is because we're easily 50 years away from having telescopes strong enough to actually look at these stars and see a moon. My research finds that yes, even in these cramped systems, moons can exist. And in exploring this, I found a rather surprising thing. Moons can dynamically hop between planets. Imagine if we could trade our moon for Titan or Europa, just swap every couple of hundred years. That's actually possible if you're the third rock from the Kepler-32 sun. <laughs> Thank you to those of you who got that reference. <laughs> Uh, the final thrust of my research is to figure out what is the maximum mass that can exist if for one of these moons. The reason we're interested in this is because it's going to tell us a lot about what these moons actually look like, right? Long before we image them with telescopes. Are they dust rings like at Saturn? Are they slightly more massive but not very massive asteroidal moons like at Mars? Or are they moons more like ours, which are big, have shape and gravity of their own? Um, and, and they look familiar. This is what I'm trying to figure out. So I want to leave you with this thought. The next time you look up into the sky and you see all those stars, just think to yourself, it's a really cramped universe out there. Thank you. <laughs>